What's up YouTube? My name is Beloved and I am back with another video. Before I go ahead and start it though, if you're interested in how to plan a stress-free stress, stress wedding and for just more tips and tricks and more videos on lifestyle, faith, fashion, and just all of the above, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. But without further ado, let's go ahead with the video. So these seven tips, again, did not ensure that your wedding is going to be absolutely perfect with zero mistakes ever, but they did keep me sane. And my husband and I got married November of 2020, November 26th of 2022. And honestly, we were planning our wedding from about April of 22. So tip number one is I almost fell. That's what, that's what that is. <laughs> tip number one is make sure you communicate with your fiance. As soon as he proposes, everyone's all happy, all in your face, like, oh my gosh, what are you gonna do? Ignore all of that except the congratulations. But talk to your fiance before kind of just accepting all this influx of information because people are gonna have their opinions on how they think you should do your wedding, what you shouldn't do, what they did, what they didn't do, and they all mean well, but it can get very overwhelming and sort of cause you to think that you need more than what you actually need. Make sure y'all are on the same page as far as what you both want, how much you both can afford. You guys are both are on the same wing length, you understand what you're expecting, and you guys have that set in stone. So tip number two, this might be jumping the gun a little bit, but in your budgeting phase, instead of expending X amount of money on the actual wedding, spend it on the honeymoon. And what I mean by honeymoon, I don't necessarily mean going on some lavish trip, going all around the world. Hey, if that's what's in your budget, boo, go ahead, travel, and I will live vicariously through you. See all the countries on your honeymoon, why not? If you can afford it, okay. But even if you can afford it, um, and you're gonna take X amount of time to go and spend time with each other for that honeymoon, one of the things that I, my husband and I talk about, and it was the best thing, still definitely go out, go to um, whatever destination you wanna go to, but make sure you have that money set aside to take some time from work and to just be with your husband. So we did one week-ish in Mexico and then two weeks at home just decompressing getting to know each other it was just combining our lives and our lifestyles praying together getting the sense of okay this is married life so yeah definitely if you're gonna spend the money i would suggest putting more money in the honeymoon than the actual wedding because the wedding is only a couple of hours honestly versus your honeymoon that's when you really get to know each other that's when the true bread and butter starts i keep doing this and i'm talking about honeymoon and it just seems so inappropriate i don't I don't, I talk with my hands. <laughs> but anyway, tip number three, it's not about anyone else. We ran into this a lot where we were constantly trying, it seemed like to please everyone um, because, only because our engagement, my husband did an amazing job. And again, if you wanna know more about my engagement or maybe we see clips of that video, drop that in the comments below. Um, I can definitely talk through it because my engagement still blows my mind. I think about my engagement more than I think about my wedding. That's how great it was. And that's how great everyone else thought it was. So for our wedding, people came up to me, I don't know about him, but with seemingly very high expectations. It just produced a lot of people thinking that we're gonna have this crazy extravagant wedding. So I kept kind of feeling pressure to deliver that. Like I had to meet everyone's expectations. Oh man, yo, they're expecting doves. I gotta get doves. It's just about YouTube. It may seem easy to remember now, but as the planning process starts coming along and all the different personalities start getting involved, remember, filter it through. What you and your fiance want. Filter it through. Is this biblical? Is this God? Like what I should be doing? What I want to be doing? And that leads me perfectly to tip number four. Be prepared for the enemy to attack. Um, the devil loves to use these opportunities. God loves when a man and woman comes together and they're becoming man and wife. So the enemy knows that. So the devil loves nothing more than to throw trials, to throw temptations, to throw all these crazy things your way. So be prepared for that. Make sure your prayer life is secure. Make sure you're surrounding yourself with men and women of God who are gonna uplift you up, who are gonna speak life into you, who are gonna encourage you. 
And honestly, I felt like during the whole wedding process, my my life just felt like like it was put in a bottle and just shaken up. Again, I can talk deeper on this if you guys want, but for the sake of the length of this video, I just felt like from the time um, Michael, which is my husband's name, and I like got engaged and really got serious about marriage to the time we actually got married was insane. <laughs> so be prepared for that. Be prayed up. Know your word so that you can use it when the enemy tries to attack you, okay? And number five is have a point of contact during your wedding. Someone you can trust, someone who's reliable, someone who knows their stuff, someone who can facilitate all the decisions because you don't want to actually make any decisions on your big day. And make sure your whole bridal party knows that if something were to go wrong, don't come to me, don't come to him, go to her, go to him or whatever. That is a big lifesaver. And rule number six, my husband and I, for our wedding, y'all, we had a salad bar. Sorry. We had salad bar rolls and cupcakes and I'm sure some people complained, but we didn't hear any of it. But when you're doing the food, less is better. Make it as elegant looking as possible, but you don't have to spend an arm and a leg on it. The food alone, doing it our way, we ended up coming out of pocket about maybe $800 just doing a salad bar and that we kind of put together ourselves versus we're gonna have the same ingredients catered in and the price automatically went from 800 to 2500 insane try to make your own food if possible or if you can't make it get it in batches from other different places and again consider your health department consider your permits whatever that needs to be done make sure you do it if it's a public event if it's private you have a little more um freedom our wedding was private it was invite only so most weddings are but then again it just depends on where you're at but tip number seven it is not gonna be perfect, okay? It is not gonna be perfect. With all your planning, your praying, your fasting, your begging God that everything works out, and it, all of it, with all of it, it's not gonna be perfect. I ordered my dress, my wedding dress, before my husband and I were engaged. Because I honestly felt like God told me that he was my husband, and I was like, okay. So I ordered my wedding dress in August. My wedding dress arrived like, early October, probably the tail end of September. And they sent it to me damaged. And I didn't get my actual wedding dress until the week of my wedding. So, and I thought I was planning in advance. This is just a freebie tip, but if you can, get your dress in store. Get your dress in store and have a backup dress available that you can pick up or online, whatever that's gonna be here. Because again, mine was kind of a disaster, but that just brings me to that same tip. Not everything's gonna be perfect. Give yourself grace. Relax, take a breath. My husband and I, as soon as our wedding was over, we made a bet. We were just like, okay, this car ride home, this is the only time we're gonna talk about everything bad that happened that we noticed. Probably no one else noticed, but we noticed everything. On the car ride home, we went through the ups, the downs, the mediums, everything, and then we squashed it. We didn't talk about it again after that. But what made it so beautiful for our wedding um after we were done all the, the reception all of it pictures the whole shebang were over his grandmother couldn't make it to the ceremony of the reception due to health issues um she lives in an assistant assisted living facility so my husband wanted to while we were still in our you know his he was in his tux i was in the wedding dress we went to her um where she was living it felt like a scene out of a movie like bro the nurses, the staff were just looking at us like, and we, we walked down and just so his grandmother could see us in our full attire. And she looked, so, she was so happy. And at the end of the day, though we knew everything wasn't perfect, when it was said and done, I got this sense of just peace and overwhelming happiness because like this, this, this was worth more than anything literally anything being able to be with my actual husband and go home with him and start a life with him that is the point everything else is just the cake and was it ice i don't eat cake i don't really like cake the icing on the icing on top everything else is just that literally and i said seven tips and i gave you probably like nine you're welcome. So that is all that I have for you guys today. Again, as always, thank you so much for watching my video. If you liked any part of this, hit the like button and the subscribe button below. You guys are amazing. Jesus loves you and see you next time. Bye.